Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today uh, we'll talk about research writing and documenting sources. But uh, the main focus of today's lecture will be how to document sources. I'll discuss it in, of course, later what uh, I actually mean by documenting sources. I would first like to talk very briefly about research uh, writing. Why I'm not focusing more on research writing for one reason, because in our last you know, few classes, we have directly, indirectly talked a lot about you know, in a way, research writing. If you remember, we studied in two classes the process of writing. Now, the process of writing indirectly, we were actually talking about, you know, research writing in a way. Like if you, if you can recall the process, you know, which we discussed, out of uh, many different processes, if you remember, like, was uh, inputting, you know, processing and outputting and then, you know, planning and organizing and activating and, you know, then, uh, you know, controlling. So different processes I discussed with you. But then, you know, towards the uh, actual, you know, thesis of my lecture, which I discussed with you was six, six, you know, step process of writing. There we talked about, you know, invention, collection, and then organization, and then drafting, and revising, and proofreading, and editing. You know, this is how we actually talked about. Invention was, of course, like uh, finding out your, uh, you know, purpose of your research, knowing about your audience, and then, of course, finalizing your topic. And then in uh, collection, you know, we talked about two, you know, different sources of information. One channel was internal and second was external. Internal mean like, you know, you yourself and external libraries and, you know, internet and, you know, resource persons and, you know, things of the stuff. And uh, then we talked about, you know, organizing, mean preparing uh, an outline of like, you know, all, you know, the pieces of information, you know, which you collect out of, you know, all these internal or external sources. And then we go down to, you know, actually writing that, re uh, that you know, essay or that uh, writing or that research and then going down to, you know, it's revising and it's, you know, editing and proofreading. Exactly the same way, you know, research we conduct. Just to give you a bird eye view, of course, in research also, we find a topic to write about or to research and then in the second step what we do actually we frame the research question framing the research question actually means you know narrowing down our topic to you know bringing it down to such a level you know where we could you know easily approach or manage the topic and you know information you know which uh, we then collect from different you know uh, sources of course, we give attention to our purpose of research. We do talk about, you know, for, I mean, like audience for whom, you know, we are actually conducting the research. And then comes what we survey, you know, our topic. Surveying our topic actually means, like if you remember, in uh, essay writing, when I uh, discussed with you how to analyze essay topic, there I said, like, uh, fundamentally, there are two things in an essay topic. First of all, the strategy, and the second thing is the content. Inside the content, I said, there are some prompts, which we also call as, you know, terms of questions. So these terms of questions are actually the keywords of uh, that very topic. Those keywords are actually the action words, which, of course, you have to keep very much in mind, you know, while doing research. You, of course, revolve around, move around, move about, you know, the, the same three, four, or two, you know, those action words or the terms of questions. Now, this is actually was uh, analyzing essay question. Exactly the same way, when you have uh, framed your research question, exactly the same way you, you know, analyze that research, you know, question, you find out the terms of question, and then through, which we call as, you know, prim primary analysis of your topic, which is what you try to find out the meanings and the definitions, you know, of the same action words or terms of questions through different encyclopedia. For example, Britannica, Americana, or, you know, Columbia Encyclopedia. You consult these and you find out 
the basic, you know, meanings of those, you can say, terms of questions, so that, you know, the, your, uh, I mean, the question statement of your research is very much, you know, clear, and uh, then, then uh, happens what you, you know, collect, or you can say you make a list of different sources which you're going to use in your research, and after that comes the evaluation stage. In evaluation stage, what you do actually, look, you have primarily, you have analyzed your research topic, and then you have read about from different, you know, sources of information about that topic. Then what we do, we bring our topic and our research strategy, you know, in an, uh, uh, you know, evaluation stage, where we do what we, if needed, we fine-tune our topic, or we set the focus of our research. If that needs some adjustment, you know, we do that. And also, since we have gone through different, you know, uh, sources of information, we evaluate our sources because the quality of your research depends upon the quality of your sources of information. Then happens what you actually uh, start working with your sources of information, and then um, you have collected enough, you know, information, in, you know, with you, and then outline of your research is also with you, and you start, you know, organizing different pieces of information. And side by side, you keep on evaluating. I mean, you keep on fine-tuning your research question. You keep on fine-tuning, you know, the uh, uh, your research strategy, you know, which you follow. So that, you know, two, three things could be synchronized. The purpose, the audience, and the very research problem, you know, that could, that could be like, you know, synchronized, tuned up, you know, with each other. And then, of course, you draft your research, you revise your research, you edit your research, you proofread your research. So these are, of course, the steps of your conducting research, or you can say research writing. So, I mean, if you, if you put it in parallel with the, the process of writing, so you would feel that, yes, in a way, process of writing with a few inclusions is somewhat the same thing. And the details, like, you know, with which uh, we studied the process of writing was more of like, you know, research writing, if you, I mean, uh, if you could, you know, appreciate that. Now, in our research, since we are, you know, depending on lots of material, which is actually external material, internal, internal meaning, you know, me, myself, means the ideas, information, you know, in my mind, if I write that, fine. But if I, you know, rely on, uh, of course, I will rely in research on uh, external sources, for example, libraries. Inside the libraries, I'm going to rely on different books available in the library, journals in the library, magazines in the library. Of course, I'll be, uh, you know, relying on uh, some manuscripts available there. Let's say newspapers also, some online material, different websites are there. Then, of course, um, you know, I can depend on some TV or radio interviews, you know. So external sources are many, of course, uh, in front of me. And I'm making a very good use of those sources. Now, dear students, in research, the most important thing which you have to keep in mind is that whatever, you know, sources of information, internal or external, you're using, you have to document those with your, you know, research you are writing research essay, or you're writing a research article, or you are like, you know, producing a research thesis, for example. Whatever you are doing, very much concern you should show towards uh, a very careful documenting, recording of these, you know, sources of information. You consulted books, you have to mention, you know, those books with your research. You consulted newspapers, consulted encyclopedia, consulted some websites, some newspapers, magazines, journals. Very much important thing, very much important concern you have to show that you are mentioning names of the authors, names of these works, you know, the publications, you know, all that. That's very much important in research. If it's your internal source of information, for example, I'm relying on my own, you know, information, my own ideas, that's all right. But if it's an external, you have to mention it with your essay, with your article, with your thesis. This is what we actually call documenting sources of information. And 
the rest of my lecture, of course, I'll focus on the same, how to document, you know, our sources of information. Now, please keep in mind, you must have, uh, you know, seen written somewhere or you must have seen, you know, uh, in the real sense, some research, you know, where you found people documenting sources in a very inconsistent manner. I mean to say, if there are some books, for example, people consulted for, for their research. So what they, what they do is, you know, they write uh, the book name, for example, Seven Habits by Stephen R. Covey. No year of publication, no chapters or pages, you know, which they have consulted, it's mentioning, you know, let's say no edition thing they talk about, no publication information, I mean, who is the publisher and uh, where that book actually was published from. So these many, you know, pieces, uh, of course, they miss out, maybe due to carelessness or what. There are some standard formats. If we follow those standard formats, you know, what, what benefits you know, we'll gain, our documenting sources will be extremely consistent and globally standard. What are those uh, standard formats? Number one, we have APA format. APA stands for American Psychological Association. And it's, uh, you know, uh, further if you need its uh, references online, its website is www apastyle.org. Of course, you can yourself go and see, uh, you know, uh, what this all is about. Second important, you know, document format or citation format is MLA, which stands for Modern Language Association. Now, if you follow these two, I mean, you can follow either APA. APA mostly is followed for scientific writings, and MLA is followed for non-scientific humanities, you know, work and all. So if you follow, you're following, I mean, doesn't matter which one you, according to your subject, your research will be globally standardized. What benefits you're going to have if you follow AP or MLA? Of course, number one, cross-referencing facility you are giving to your, you know, readers. If I have, uh, you know, written, let's say, a research essay and I have uh, in AP, let's say, documented all my sources of information, now you are, if my reader, what benefit I'm actually giving you in future, if you need to, you know, locate the, uh, locate the same sources of information for your own research, for example. So you can take my research to the library over there. You know, you can find out all the books, magazines, websites, you know, journals, encyclopedia, which I use for my research. You can also, like, you know, make a use of that. So this is what actually we call cross-reference. Your readers can cross-reference, you know, your research. All the sources which you consulted, since you have given every tittly bitly information about those sources, second person, third person can also make benefit from. Number two, consistency. If you're following any global standardized format, then uh, all people who use APA, they will find that the research is inconsistent. They would know where I'm, like, you know, writing my uh, parenthetical citations and where I'm writing, you know, my reference or my bibliography, of course, they would know it. There would, of course, will be a consistency. If I'm APA user, you are APA user, we know each other. We know each other's, you know, style. Of course, we'll be knowing that uh, how books will be documented, how newspapers are documented, and what to learn from, you know, those pieces of information, you know, which we are, you know, documenting in with our research. Number three, credibility. Credibility actually is a difference between internal and external pieces of information. Internal, fine. I mean, if I, you know, researched based on my own information, my own examination, my own analysis, that's all right. Nobody can, you know, raise any eyebrow. Why? Because this is my personal, you know, exploration. But if I have relied on external sources, and I haven't mentioned, I haven't mentioned the names of those sources, then everybody, of course, is going to raise finger that, uh, you know, you know, many questions you will have to answer, your credibility, your goodwill, of course, will be at stake. Why? Because you are not acknowledging the works of those people, you know, who burnt, I mean, uh, the midnight oils, you know, in producing their research, and you, you know, took benefits from their research, and you used, you know, their information, you used their work, you know, for your own research and you did not acknowledge this is something I would say the greatest sin you know I, I like to call it you know in research 
The last thing is in you know, a plagiarism. Again, the same thing. If your research is with uh, all source documentation, you know, uh, then uh, people, of course, will not say that you have misused, you know, these sources. These days, plagiarism, of course, is punishable, you know, crime. This is intellectual theft, okay? And uh, there are, like, you know, organizations which are research organizations, you know, which monitor research globally. They are, you know, keeping an eye on, like, you know, different, uh, you know, research going on across the world. And if they find any research with plagiarism, of course, they stand up and, uh, you know, they, uh, of course, bring it to, uh, you know, a panel, you know, where that ultimately is decided where, whether, like, you know, this, you know, person, the researcher, like, you know, he committed plagiarism or not. So, to how to avoid this plagiarism, how to, you know, go away from this plagiarism, very simple thing. Whatever external source you have consulted, just document that, give its name, author's name, work name, public, you know, its publication, you know, information, and save yourself. So this is how, you know, benefits you can gain from, you know, following some, uh, you know, international, global, standardized, you know, research formats. I named two research formats, number one, APA, and number two, MLA. They have lots of similarities and a few differences. First, I'll talk with you, you know, talk about APA thing, and then, you know, uh, towards the end of my today's lecture, I'll, like, you know, try to compare APA and MLA. APA, as I said, this is American Psychological Association. It has two major focuses. Number one, reference page. It helps you to prepare your reference page. And number two, parenthetical citations. Now, what's the difference in these two? Look here. If you have consulted someone's full-fledged work, let's say a book. A book is someone's full-fledged work. You consulted newspaper, magazine, encyclopedia. I mean, a whole lot of stuff like, you know, if you consulted the size of information, if it's huge, for example, that piece of information comes onto a reference page. Now, reference page actually is a page where that, of course, is set at the end of your essay or your article where, you know, alphabetically you organize all, you know, sources. Books are there, newspapers are there, websites are there, encyclopedia, whatever like, you know, source you have consulted. Alphabetically, you mentioned there. Now, what is parenthetical citation? Parenthetical citation means inside the text references. What does it mean? Look, you did not consult some, you did not, you know, use someone's full-fledged book. Rather, just a line from that book. Maybe a small news, you know, from some newspaper. Maybe a small facts and figures, you know, from some encyclopedia, for example. You have not consulted the whole work of somebody, read, rather small bits and pieces, like you use quotes, for example. Somebody said, you know, first thing first is someone's quotation, for example, or uh, first understand then, you know, to be understood is someone's quotation. If you want to quote these two lines, or if work, work, work is, you know, Jana's line, for example, you want to quote, how you quote that? Very simply, inside the text, you you write like Jina said and his quotation, and with the quotation, you know, you write, let's say, uh, the author's name, you write the year in which, you know, he said this, and uh, the page number, if it was published, you know, somewhere it's page number. So we have then two APA focuses on two things. Number one, out of the text, out of the text, you know, citations, and inside the text citations. Out of the text means, you know, as I said, books, journals, you know, magazines, all separately, alphabetically arranged after, at the end of your essay or article. Second one is inside the text, you know, uh, citations, like quotations are there, like uh, if, you ha if you haven't uh, just uh, copied somebody word to word, rather you have summarized, you know, his uh, point of view, that again, you know, is inside the text citation. Or if you have, uh, you know, paraphrased someone, I mean, someone's point, 
you have reworded in your own language that also is you know inside the text you know citation so the both things APA monitors and helps you how to document it now let's discuss one by one you know how APA helps you prepare the reference page like on the reference page you will name books you will name let's say newspapers you will name magazines then um, this websites are there you know so all these things you'll name on a reference page let's take a look what's the uh, format what comes first what comes second what comes third you know let's take a look now this is you know reference page citation every citation should have at least three things number one author's name should be there number two title of work and number three publication information and uh, example I have given let's say the first item is of course writer's name O'Connor is the writer the second item is year of publication and what comes next is express yourself in written English this is the title of work if it's a book then it's a book then and uh, the next two you can see there are two items with the colon mentioned this is actually publication information the first one is the place of publication Illinois and the second one is publisher's name NTS so dear student this is how we prepare a bibliographic note please do not forget now we are actually talking about how to prepare references now references mean out of the text citations and I have given you an example that every citation which is the reference citation out of the text citation it should have three important things you should mention author's name you should mention you know the work name title of work and number three you should mention its publication information the publication information means of course three things the year it was published number one the place it was published from number two and number three the publisher now let's uh, you know study how to record books magazines newspapers and you know websites now of course I'll discuss these you know one by one let's first uh, study what is the format of uh, recording books as an external source the first one Shea J it's actually it was you know J Shea which means author's name please keep in mind author's names surname we mention first then we put comma and the remaining names for example if someone's name is A J Smith we A.J. Smith, Abraham Jr. Smith. Smith is actually his surname. So in a bibliographic note, first we'll mention surname and then the remaining. For example, from A.J. Smith, it will be Smith, comma, A.J. So this is how we'll, uh, you know, document, we'll write author's name. After this author's name will come, of course, year of publication, which uh, I have mentioned, let's say, in brackets, 1994. And then comes title of work. Ackles in Vietnam, combat, trauma, and the undoing of character. Now, you have seen, you know, this title, the name of this title or the title of, you know, this work is divided by a colon, which means, you know, major title and minor title. There are some books, you know, which have uh, dual, you know, titles, major and then minor. Both we need to mention. Of course, we are going to separate this, you know, with the help of a colon. What comes next is New York and then again colon and touchstone. Now New York is actually the place from where you know this uh, book was uh, you know published and touchstone, touchstone of course is the publisher. So this is how we document book. Don't forget first of all author's name and author's name surname is first. Number two year of publication. Number three title of work. If uh, title of work is in dual form so both we mention so we separate you know with the help of colon next comes what publication information the first one is place of publication the second one is publisher's name both will be separated with the help of colon another important thing you keep in mind these items are separated with the help of full stops you can take a look once again that after author's name there's a full stop year of publication after full stop title of work full stop and of course at the end which is the publication information you know there is a full stop this is how we document books if we consult number two articles in a magazine of course method will be the same author's name will come first since articles are I mean they you know 
like in books, we only talked about the year of publication, like if it's 1990, 2000, 2006. But when we talk about magazines, you know, over there we have to mention day of day, month, and year, all the three. Not the year only we mentioned, rather day, month, and year, all the three items, you know, we give. And of course, we give in brackets the way we, you know, gave year of publication of books in brackets. Once again, you can see author's name is there, his surname first, and the remaining, you know, names second. Then in brackets, full date, year first, month second, and then day. Next comes busy days. Now, busy days is the title of work. You can say it was articles, articles, you know, headline, you can say. Next comes what? The New Yorker. New Yorker is the magazine name. And then you can see there are numbers. These are actually page numbers, 40 to 45. This is how we document magazine. For books, you know, we are not writing page numbers. Why? Because you consulted the whole book. If you, let's say, did not consult the whole book, you consulted, you know, one or two pages. So you can mention, you know, P dot P means P dot P, let's say, 9 and uh, hyphen, let's say, 12. It means page 9 to page 12. You can mention, but usually we do not, you know, mention page numbers with the books. As far as magazines concern, you know, articles, there are like hundreds of articles in a magazine. So what to do actually, the article which you consulted, its page number you need to mention. If its article was, let according to this uh, slide, 40 to 45 means, you know, six page article, you know, mention that. Comes next is, you know, web page. You know, very interesting that Usually, how people like document the website, websites you know, they consult, simply they write in a website address, which is, of course, a mistake. If not a mistake, then uh, if we say, like, you know, AP and MLA, from AP and MLA point of view, of course, it will be a mistake. Means there are more than this uh, electronic address, you know, information we have to give. For example, here also, we have to talk about who is the author of the article, article's name you have to talk about, and then website name, and of course, then website's address. Plus, when that article was written and when you downloaded that article. So in website, you know, documentation, you have to write two dates. One date will be, of course, the date of that article when, it, when you know, it was, you know, uh, published. And second will be the day you downloaded. Take a look. The first one, of course, author's name. The article, you know, which you downloaded, it's author's name. Next comes the date of publication in brackets again. And then hot button. The hot button is the article's name. Comes next is rough cut. Now, rough cut actually is the website name. For example, if you are consulting BBC website, let's say, or CNN, for example. So BBC will be its name and that is the website page name. CNN may be the website page name, so you can write, you know, CNN thing. And then, you know, the language I have given there is retrieved October 28, 1998 from electronic address. Now, retrieved means, you know, the day you downloaded. So you write retrieved, then comes date. Now, this date you're not going to mention in brackets. Without brackets, it will go from and then full-fledged, you know, that electronic address. Of course, www.roughcut.com. So this is how, you know, we record. We document the website, you know, uh, sources. We, please keep in mind, do not just mention the website's uh, electronic address. Rather, talk about author's name, talk about uh, website name, article name, year of its publication, plus the date you downloaded. This is very, very, very important. Let's now move towards newspapers now. How to document Newspapers, if you have consulted. Again, for newspaper thing, what is important? Again, author's name will be important. Then, newspapers, the day it was published, printed. And uh, next, of course, you know, title of the work. And then will be uh, newspaper's name and the page number. We do not write... The, you know, like in books, publication information is what? It's a name of three, like date, number two, place of publication. For newspapers, place of publication is not important. Newspaper's name is important. Newspaper's date of printing is important. And uh, what you call that? Just 
then the page number on which you know, that article was printed is important. You can take a look. The first one is, again, author's name, in bracket, date of its printing. Then comes article's full-fledged name, master teachers whose artistry glows in private. And comes next is New York Times. This is, you know, newspaper's name only. Place of publication, we haven't mentioned. And then comes what? Page number. P, B2. Now, P stands for page, of course. B2, newspaper is divided in sections and then subsections, like A, B, C, D, then, you know, A1, A2, A3 subsections, B1, B2, B3 subsections. So, newspaper, you know, page numbers are usually not this way, A1, 2, 3, 4, because uh, newspapers uh, can be of, uh, you know, 100 pages or 50 pages or 60 pages. So, 1, 2, going down to 60 or 100, of course, will be... Uh, difficult for the you know you know newspapers readers to manage so what they do is actually they divide newspapers into sections and then then you know sub numbers small numbers one to nine you know they prefer using okay let's now move towards a source with no known author so what we do actually we in here since the author is not there so first line of the work we mention first and then uh, its uh, date of publication next comes a uh, newspaper name and then, of course, page number. Take a look. When newspapers are there, different pieces of news which are printed in the newspapers, they usually do not go with the author's name. So if you want to quote some piece of news, for example, of course, author is not there. So what you do that, either headline you use as the starter of this uh, source, or if not headline, the topic sentence you, know, you can use, like the example which I read for you. In here, you know, the topic sentence actually we used as a starter. Since author is not there, and uh, so what we do, we start from, I cannot call it title of work actually, we start from that piece of writing, that, you know, piece of information in which we used for our, you know, research, its topic sentence goes first, and then, you know, accordingly the same all pieces, like its year of publication, the newspaper, you know, the page number. This is how, like, you know, we do it. Let's move now towards parenthetical citations. As I told you before, parenthetical citations are inside the text citations. And uh, when we use parenthetical citations, three things. Number one, if any quote you copied from, if you are summarizing someone's material and you're using in your essay or in your article. Number three, if you are paraphrasing. I mean, you read some information, then you translated that information in your own language, okay, and you are using in your research. So in these three cases, you have to mention parenthetical citation. Now, what is parenthetical citations? Like in a reference page, we were recording so many things. We, we were recording author's name, we were recording the year of publication, you know, title of uh, the work and uh, place of publication, publisher's name, page numbers, in parenthetical citation, we try to keep ourselves, you know, very brief. We, you know, record three things. Number one, author's name, only surname. Number two, we record uh, year of publication and the page number, you know, where from you took this uh, piece. As I, you know, mentioned before, that there are lots of, you know, I mean, uh, quotations available in dictionaries and encyclopedia of quotation, and you want to use, you know, some quote. Three things will be required for APA citation. You have to write author's name. Number two, of course, here it will be divided with the help of, you know, comma. Number two, year of publication. And number three, page number. On your screen, there is one example. Like uh, in commas, inverted commas, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Now, this is the quote which you want to use in your writing. Of course, these are not your words, these are someone else's word. Therefore, you have to, you know, show it off from your text with the help of, you know, inverted commas. And then right after the quote, in bracket, number one, you mentioned author's name, which is Kavi. Now, here you're not using uh, his uh, first or second name, only surname we are using, we, because, you know, we try to keep ourselves, you know, very much brief. And then comma, and comes next what? year of publication, and then the page number. This is an example of parenthetical citation. We call it parenthetical citation. The word parenthetical is, of course, from the parentheses, which we call as brackets. 
Now, there are two styles in APA of writing parenthetical citation. Style number one is that first you mention the code, and right after the code, you can give these three pieces of information, author, you know, year of publication, and the page number. Second option with you is that you start half citation you give at the start of the code and half you give in the end. I mean, author's name and uh, year of publication you can give at the start and page number you can give, you know, in the end. The code you sandwich inside. These are two possibilities. You can, you know, choose the one which suits you. Easier one is, of course, the one, you know, in which you give all the three pieces of information, you know, at the end of the quotation because it's very easy to manage. Otherwise, you know, text management sometimes becomes, you know, a um, question if you're not very good at, you know, uh, at desktop. Uh, you lack, you know, desktop skills. So it would be difficult for you. So very easy way is give the code and after the code, you know, in brackets, give those three pieces of information. Let's you know, discuss different possibilities, you know, towards parenthetical citation. Look here. One possibility is, of course, one code and author's name you give. If there are two authors, for example, and their surnames are same, what to do? I'm saying that if you are quoting someone's work, this is now not just one author, rather there are two authors. You quote from some book, that book is written by two authors, the surnames are same, what to do? Very simple, you will put uh, this parenthetical, you know, citation in, of course, in two groups, inside the brackets, separated with the help of semicolon. Example, you can see, more than one author with the same last name, like James in uh, first group and James in the second group, you know, these are two uh, same surnames. So what we are doing actually, first citation, parenthetical citation, and then we put a semicolon and the second, you know, citation. So this is how we separate it. And one more thing is, we add any initial. Let's say if, I mean, James, the first name is James, its uh, middle name, let's say, was uh, H initial, so H James. And the second name is James, but its middle name is W as initial, so W. So H and W, this separated, and this mentioned you that, you know, this is not just one author written in two separate brackets, rather. These are two, you know, different names, okay? But, of course, the, you know, code was the same, or the information, you know, which you consulted, of course, was the same. Exactly the same way, if there are, you know, more than two authors you want to quote at the same time. Look here, one way is one quote, it's parenthetical citation. Second quote, it's parenthetical citation. There is another way that you want to, you know, quote, let's say, three to four items in your essay simultaneously, one after the other. So what, you know, you have two choices. Either give parenthet parenthetical citation, you know, with each and every quote separately, or you can, you can, you know, group these uh, citations together also. Like on your screen, I can, uh, you know, illustrate this point that two or more works in the same parenthesis, how? Like uh, first author's name and then year of publication, then comes semicolon. Then second author's name, it's year of publication. Then again, semicolon, third author's name, and it's year of publication. So this is how, you know, you can mention all, you know, authors separately, but of course, order has to be, you know, very carefully managed. I mean, order has to be same as, like, you know, the quotes you have ordered. This is how, like, uh, many authors you can manage, you know, simultaneously in one bracket. Now, one more example of parenthetical citation, work with six or more authors. Six or more authors would be, of course, very difficult to manage inside the text. So what we do is actually we show, like the way, you know, we say Imran and the company, exactly the same way we can mention. Like I have prepared one uh, parenthetical citation for you when authors are, you know, six or more than six. So what we do actually, one author and then we use a phrase at all. At all means, you know, this man and all his, you know, companions. And then comes the year of publication. This is how we manage. And then comes if a specific part of a source you want to quote, 
Then again, author's name will be there. It's, you know, year of publication. And now comes what? The chapter name. Let's say chapter 2 or chapter 1. This is one possibility. Let's go ahead. If the source has no known author, then use an abbreviated version of the title. Like if the full title is California Cigarette Tax Deters Smokers. So if you want to prepare, you know, it's citation, very simply, write California and then year of publication. So what we are actually doing, like if you remember, we discussed how to prepare, you know, a bibliographic note of uh, uh, a piece, you know, or, or of a source where author is not known. So what actually we uh, studied that you can use uh, either the headline or the topic sentence and then the remaining pieces, you know, the way we record books. But in parenthetical cit citation, what we do actually, very first word of the headline or very first word of the topic sentence we use only and then the year of publication, you know, we, we give. So this is how we, you know, we write uh, parenthetical citations. Please keep in mind, this is very, very important, the difference between reference page and parenthetical citation. This is something very, very important. Reference page means when all the sources which you discussed full-fledged you give at the end of your essay or at the end of your article. Parenthetical citations means when you are not consulting full-fledged actually sources, you are consulting smaller parts of those sources and you are using either word to word or you are summarizing them or you are paraphrasing them. Inside the text you are using, then we do not mention these uh, sources on reference page, rather we mention these, you know, inside the text and we call them parenthetical citations. Whichever word, whichever line, whichever phrase, whichever paragraph, you know, we copied from some source, it has to go with its original author and the publication, you know, information. Since this piece is not written by you, if you do not mention, look here, you quoted somebody, you quoted somebody's words, for example, even if you summarized or paraphrased, look here, this is not your idea. This is not a piece from your mind. These are the words of someone else. And if you do not mention, you know, parenthetical citation, you will be caught in plagiarism. And which is, of course, I told you, a punishable crime. Therefore, advice from my side is, in research, in research writing, we have to, you know, you know, draw a line between internal and external sources. Internal sources, you. We don't mind. Don't mention. That's your information. That's your examination. That's your analysis. It's all right. But external information, you know, sources, they have to be documented either on a reference page or as parenthetical citation. This is something very, very important. Now, let's, you know, move towards MLA format now and see what's the difference between APA and MLA. As I told you at the start of my lecture, that there is a very small difference in APA and MLA. Of course, in MLA, which stands for Modern Language Association, if you find, want to find more inf information about online, you can go www.mla.org. Now, what's the difference? Of course, in MLA also, you will write author's name. In MLA, you will write, uh, of course, uh, the year of publication. You will write, uh, you know, author's, uh, I mean, title of work also, page numbers also. But the difference is, you know what? Mostly, difference will be with the placement of this information. Like in APA, if you, if you can now uh, recall, in APA, first author's name and right after author's names, you know, we give what? The year of publication. But in MLA, what happens? This year of publication actually goes at the end, you know. It goes towards the end of the bibliographic note. To just give you an example, that uh, the first is what? Author's name, right? And then comes uh, Babel Tower. Now, this Babel Tower is the book name. And then comes next is New York is the place of publication. Random House is the publisher's name. And then coming, you know, year of publication. This is what actually the difference is between uh, 
ای پی ای اینڈ ایم ایل اے ان ای پی اے وی یوز یئر آف پبلیکیشن رائٹ نیکسٹ ٹو آتھرس نیم ان ایم ایل اے وی آر رائٹنگ یئر آف پبلیکیشن ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دی بیبلیوگرافک نوٹ سو دس از ہاؤ وی ریکارڈ بکس ون مور ڈفرنس ان اے پی اے وی ڈو ناٹ اٹیلیسائز ٹائٹل آف ورک آئی مین اف اٹس اے بک دین بک نیم وی ڈو ناٹ اٹیلیسائز وی رائٹ اٹ ان یو نو ریگولر فارم بٹ ان ایم ایل اے وی اٹیلیسائز یو نو ٹائٹل آف دا ورک سو دیز ٹو یو نو ڈفرنسز آر دیئر year of uh, publication at the end of the bibliographic note and number two title of work we have to italicize let's see how we document article in magazine again author's name is first and then comes uh, dizzy days you know which is article name the new yorker is the magazine name then comes date in uh, apa date was coming first and here date is coming you know at the end this is how we record uh, you know article in a magazine so you are of course continuing continuously watching that uh, difference is minor just the placement is the difference otherwise you know the items which we need for documentation are of course the same every you know bit and piece of apa and the same are the bits and pieces of uh, mla placement is the difference let's go ahead how we record web page now here you will find some interesting difference of course number one comes the author's name then is coming uh, the article which you uh, downloaded and here the article is you know put in inverted commas then comes uh, rough cut which is the uh, website name and is coming next uh, the date the date of this uh, article's uh, publication next is coming the date when you downloaded you know this uh, article and website's electronic address you know we put in brackets now this is if you remember in apa we say retrieved from so and so you know website okay but in here we do not use this phrase retrieved from we simply give uh, the date of publication you know then uh, we give you know that uh, website's uh, name and after website's name just in bracket full fledged electronic address you know we mentioned so this is how we record web pages in mla going towards newspaper article again author's name is first master teachers whose artistry glows in private this is the article name newspaper name and then coming what the date of printing another important thing in APA page number is abbreviated as P and then page number in MLA the letter P we do not mention you know we simply write the page number if it's page number 7 so we'll write simply 7 that would be understood as page number you know otherwise uh, if it's a sectional page number then of course B1 B2 B3 this is how you mention it going towards a source with uh, no known author exactly the same way headline or Uh, the topic sentence but here in inverted commas next newspaper name next is what the you know day of printing and then you know page number another interesting thing is that date and page number they are separated with the help of a colon let's now move towards parenthetical citations in mla now what's the difference in apa we give uh, three uh, pieces of information author's name and then year of publication and page number in mla we do not give year of publication we only write author's name and page number like in you can see example on your screen seek first to understand then to be understood and uh, in brackets as parenthetical citation kavi is the author's name and page 45 now kavi author's name page 45 means you know the page 45 of the book written by kavi so that is the major difference between apa and mla Dear students these are two you know standard formats to document uh, you know sources of information of course which are external sources of information the benefits if i count again for you number one cross referencing facility you give to your readers number two you know uh, consistent format you are offering to your readers number three credibility and number four you know you can uh, skip plagiarism today we talked about research writing and document you know documenting sources research writing we you know studied you know that uh, there is a huge similarity between you know 
writing process and uh, the research writings, you know, steps, they are somewhat the same. Of course, like uh, towards in research, you know, we keep on fine tuning our topic. We keep on, you know, fine tuning our research strategy. And then we uh, talked about how to document external sources. I discussed with you two, you know, standard formats, APA and MLA. And in APA, we said that uh, doesn't matter it's a book, newspaper, it's a magazine, it's a, you know, website or it's a source, you know, of which author is not known. We have to give certain, you know, systematic information for all these, like author's name has to be there, year of publication is there, title of the work has to be, then publication information, you know, should go. Of course, newspaper and books, there are, of course, differences. They have to go by uh, the items in which I discussed with you. And then we talked about MLA, and uh, I discussed with you the minor differences between APA and MLA, and, uh, you know, how, like, uh, parenthetical citation of MLA is different from APA. So this is, you know, how we, you know, started today, how to document sources in on a reference page and in parenthetical citation. I hope you understood. It's, of course, a bit technical. You need to, like, uh, you know, revise the handouts which I have given you so that, you know, uh, in future when you uh, write research essays or articles, you know, you should not find any difficulty in documenting sources. With this, uh, take care of yourself. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye. <music>